Tonight, I shall play Russian roulette live in this barn behind me. One gun, one bullet, and every intention of being alive at the end of the show. As ever, no actors or stooges are used in making this program. I will play Russian Roulette live with one person chosen from the 12,000 who applied to load the gun. Tonight you'll see how I selected that one individual and I'll demonstrate some of the tricks and techniques that I will use to survive tonight's performance. Before we begin, I should point out that this evening's event takes place in a controlled environment with the full cooperation and supervision of firearms experts. Russian Roulette should not, under any circumstances, be copied. It is extremely dangerous. If I'm not 100% certain that I can pull it off, I won't pull the trigger. I am sat here surrounded by videotapes from people that love the show and wanted to apply for Russian Roulette. There are 500 of them. Um, place is a mess. And I'm sat going through them. I'm looking for someone to play with. It all started with a trailer we put out. This was asking for people to go to a website and fill in a form and apply if they wanted to take part in the Russian roulette. Your task will be to load a single bullet into a revolver. My task will be not to die. 12,000 people responded to that. We got back in touch with about 1,500 of them and asked them to send in tapes. I am now sat with the result of that process, 500 tapes. Everyone's heard of Russian Roulette, but nobody ever plays it, do they? I think for me it's very much an involvement in a new experience. It's making history, it's saying this happened here now and I want to witness that place and time. Darren Brown is the master and I'd love to see him in action. Out of these 500 tapes, I need to find 100 people to invite to London. Um, those 100 people will come, meet me, I get to meet them, uh, and they will undergo a series of tests uh, as a group to whittle them down from the 100 down to five people. Those five people will then come with me to our secret location where the game will be played, and just before the game's played, they'll whittle down to one, to one person. That's one person out of the 12,000 people that applied out of the several million people that watched that advert. I can try and describe these processes to you, but in the end it is just an instinct because all these things become unconscious. There are things in the way they dress or the way they look, the way they make eye contact or don't, or even the way they talk, or they remind you of somebody which you bring all that baggage to. In the end, I just see them and I feel them and I know that's the right sort of person or it's the wrong sort of person. I, it's the only way I can describe it. There are six chambers and one bullet in the game of Russian Roulette. One of the first tricks I learned was to tell under which of six numbered cups someone had placed an object by having them look at each cup in turn or count from one to six. The Russian roulette game is simply an expansion of the same game. Can you take your bracelet off for a second? Yeah. Sure. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Two cups. Yeah. I look the other way. You take your bracelet, you put the bracelet under one of the cups. Yeah. All right. And uh, you feel free to move them around a bit so I can't, you know, tell which one it's gone under, but I'll look the other way, go. It's not looking over here, mate. No. Looking at the floor. Done? Yep. Okay, all right. Let me tell you why I'm hoping you just put that under number one, all right? Because what people tend to do, even numbers are kind of uh, warm and comfortable, people tend to go for even numbers. I'm hoping you're going to try and catch me out and put it under number one, that's what I hope. <laughs> okay. No, that's great. It's yeah, terrific. Right, yeah, it means yeah, this yeah, is easier yeah, for me because yeah. you're going to try and catch me out, which actually right. in a way makes you more predictable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it also means what I will, I will try and do this without, yeah, all right, I'm not even going to try and influence you or use any language tricks right. to manipulate you or anything. It's absolutely fair, all right? We'll do it with four cups. All right. Put it under any one of the four. Sorry. Okay. Completely okay. three choice, all right? Yep. It's up to you. Ah, Go. Three choice. All right. Done? Yeah, yeah. You done it? Yep. Okay. All right. Look at me. 
Let me just tell you first, all right? I'm hoping it's number one again, specifically because I told you the first time that you've done something that everybody tends to do. It's that feeling like you, you felt you were obvious. So the second time, of course, you're going to want to catch me out, and the easiest way of doing that is to keep it in the same one a second time. Yeah, excellent. Again? No, I give up. I no, 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 up. one more time. We'll do it with six cups. Go on, all right, let's go. Let's we'll do it with six way. cups. No, look, feel free when you've done this to move them around. I don't need thinking that there's anything to do with the way the cups are pointing, yeah. right? So all you right. can change the numbers around, you can do whatever you no, like. No problem. Let me just make that absolutely fair and evenly spaced. Okay? Yep. Go. Interesting. You done? Yep. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Let's just think. You did one twice in a row, you were trying to catch me out. Yeah. Just look at me, just count out loud from one to six. Right, take your hands out of your pockets, just look at me. Relax, nice and slowly, clearly, from one to six, go. One. Yeah. Two. Yeah. Three. Yeah. Four. Mm -hmm. Five. Yeah. Six. Yeah. I'm gonna turn over all the ones it's not under, all right? All right. I'll turn over five. Okay. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Maybe that one? Yeah. Boy, thank you so much indeed. Yeah, that is quality. That is absolutely. <laughs> I absolutely done everything I could to see if this guy was somehow trying to cheat or if there was anything going on and there's nothing going on. He's just, that's the first time I've been shot like that in my life. Just baffled, as I said. I'm absolutely baffled. <laughs>Ask them on the tape to say what their average day is, beginning with the words, my average day is. My average day is. It's so interesting how this shows people's self-perception, their self-promotion, how they want to promote themselves, and their self-esteem. Uh, my average day. Um, have a show on. Oh, get ready. I like to do a bit of stair diving. Music. I enjoy listening to. I love gardening. Feeding Murphy. Feeding myself read and go to sleep. The other thing on the tape was to dance. I said at the end of the tape, I want you to do a dance. Just 10 second dance, but you have to do it. If you don't, you are eliminated. And, uh, and of course, that's about their bravery, commitment. Um, and of course, for me, it's hilarious to watch. Um, but that is embarrassing for people, so I wouldn't dream of, uh, of showing any of those clips. <laughs> So I invited my 100 favourites to London for a day of fun and games. It's going to be a piece of television history and to be able to say that I'm a part of that, that's why I applied. I am fascinated by what he does and I want to know how he does it. The boys are nutter and I just want to meet him and find out whether it's just daftness or genius or something else driving him. I'm feeling nervous <laughs> and I keep looking at other people and my belly's going. You don't know what he's looking for, that's the problem. I prefer to leave quickly rather than get into the last ten. I think if you got down to the last ten or even the sixth person, that would be quite nasty. It's not a talent show kind of situation where I'm in competition with everybody else. Everyone's just basically here, showing who they are. If we can be of use to Darren, fantastic. If not, then thanks for the day. Morning. Thank you very much for coming. In a moment, I'm going to get you all to follow me through into another room. There are exactly a hundred of you here. And uh, you're going to undergo a series of tests, psychological games, if you like, to whittle you down from a hundred to five. And those five people will then come with me to our secret location, which I can tell you now is Barbados. <laughs> it's not. I just made that up. It's not, it's not Barbados. It's not Barbados. Um, the games will be ruthless, and some of you will be out within moments of walking into the other room. I'm aware a lot of you have travelled far, so I want to apologise for that now, because when we're in the room, I won't necessarily be able to be very civil, OK? So, I'm going to come down, and I would like you to follow me through to the other room. When you're in the other room, I want you to take a seat, wherever feels comfortable, and as quickly as you can.
Later tonight, I'll play Russian roulette in this barn behind me. So far, you've seen how I whittled 12,000 applicants down to 100. And here's how a further 95 of them were eliminated. Ready right, to come through, find a chair as quickly as you can in the room, please. Pass the message down. Okay, so the first round is as follows. There are 100 of those. There are only 90 chairs. So the first 10 people that don't find a chair will be eliminated and will be out of the game. Quick as you can, grab a seat, please. Is that all the seats taken? Yes. Yes. Thank you, that was round one. There are 100 of you, there are only 90 seats. Those of you not quick enough or keen enough to get a seat, I'm afraid, have eliminated yourselves already from the game. Thank you very much for taking part. If you'd like to make your way back through the doors. Thank you very much. Right, those of you laughing in the back row, you're also eliminated from the game. The back row personality, unassertive, nervous, not interested in you, I'm afraid. You're going to have to go. I'm terribly sorry if you'd like to make your way again through the doors. And you can take the front row with you. You're all way too eager to shoot me in the head if you'd like to make your way back through the doors. Thank you for taking part. Really stupid. It was such an obvious mistake to make. You expect a few tricks and don't expect it to be quite this dirty, though. We were very lazy. We were just ambling along and he's got to get cracking, so it was a fair comment, really. I'll remember next time how ruthless Darren Brown actually is. The rest of you, you've got three minutes to take your chairs and form three rows along the long side of the room, facing into the middle of the room. Do that now, thank you. All relaxed? Yeah? <laughs> good. Robert, where have you come from? North London. North London, good to see you. Edward? Ipswich. Ipswich. Yeah, you're eliminated if you'd like to... No, I'm joking. That's right, that's right. Um, <laughs> a golden envelope I'm going to place here on the chair. We're going to play a game, and the game is called Cross the Room. And in the game of Cross the Room, you decide whether or not you want to stay where you're sat or whether you want to cross the room. Then, after a number of you have crossed the room or stayed here, somebody will open the envelope. The envelope contains a message. It either says that everybody that crossed the room is eliminated, or it says that everybody that stayed here was eliminated. It's as simple as that. I'm going to point out some people who must cross. Stand for me, Stuart. Natalie. Elizabeth. David. Francis. Stuart. Daniel, you're going to cross. Edward, you're going to cross. Philip. These people must cross. Have a look at them. Are these people I want to keep, or are these people I want to eliminate? This is the only clue you're going to get. Sit down again for me. By crossing, are you eliminating yourself, or are you keeping yourself in the game? I'm going to give you five minutes to make that decision. A maximum of 35 people can cross. That's half of you. Your five minutes starts now. Let's play Cross the Room. back. I swear to God, if you cross the room and sit on that side, you're through to the next round. <laughs> Four, three, two, one, zero. That is your five minutes up. Uh, the chat with the envelope, would you please stand for me? Thank you, Daniel. Uh, open up the envelope. Inside is a folded piece of paper. In your nicest, clearest voice, will you read out what that says inside. I'm terribly sorry, but all the people who did not cross are eliminated. Everyone on this side has won. Simple as that. 
Uh, let me explain. The point of that was I needed people that would respond to the suggestion of crossing over the room, people that would simply obey that command that was there. I'm terribly sorry you didn't do that. I'm going to ask you to uh, leave it. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations, all of you. What I'd like you to do is to take your chairs and form seven rows of five in the centre of the room with spaces in between. And then when you've done that, if you can go to the back of the room, grab a sheet of card and a marker pen, then come and sit back down. Thank you very much. If you can do that now for me. We had a choice whether we could sit across the room or not. And I moved. And then I moved back again. And it turns out that I moved to the wrong side. It's a wonderful way to lose, actually. Um, because I'd rather not be suggestible than go through. Right, so you all have a card and a marker pen. What I'd like you to do for me now is to draw a face. All right, now you can interpret that in any way you like, but you need to make sure the face you draw, A, is large and clear, but also that it has some distinguishing feature, something about it, idiosyncratic enough that you'll be able to recognize it later on. I'm going to give you a few minutes to do that. Large and clear, go. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Please hold it up against like this so I can't see it as I turn around. I'm going to ask you uh, in a moment to pass them up to the front. Keep them face down. Uh, I'm going to ask one of you, um, just caught my eye, chap at the back, hang on to yours, all right? The rest of them, if you can pass them all forward so they end up with the person at the front of your column. The person at the front of the column who ends up with them, just give them a little mix around. And if you can pass them along when you're done, and again, as you get them, feel free to mix them around a little bit more. Thanks, Jamie, that's great. Okie doke, thank you. Nope. Interesting. No. Nope, psychopath. Nymphomaniac. The way that we draw faces says so much about the way we see ourselves and the way we see each other. So, OK, I'm looking at one here now. What this drawing says is noise. Nobody back it. Let me just show you. The marks here, they're like sound marks. It's the, the mouth and the, and the shouting. You can see someone who's energetic, yeah, because of the lines, because of all this, and somebody who works with sound, who works with uh, loud music. Mo, is this yours? Is that your drawing? Yeah, it is your drawing. OK, this one here. This one is all about looking. Um, again, nobody bat an eyelid, please. Let me just show you. There are two things here. First of all, I said this is the eyes that somebody would draw who, uh, who works in, in the visual field. It's also, it looks animated. It looks like a cartoon character. These are also the eyes of a dog lover. Who had the spaniel called Ralphie? That was you, James, yes? Is this your drawing? Yeah, and you do, don't you? You work in uh, graphic... Yeah, motion. Motion graphic, exactly, yeah, fantastic. Excellent. So there's a guy at the back. Would you stand up for me? Don't let me see your drawing, just hold it against your chest. All right. The first questions I start to ask are, will Daniel be self-obsessed enough to draw a reflection of himself or one of me? You've got a dark sort of look that you obviously like. You're wearing an earring, I can't really see from here, or two. You've got, s yeah. And there'll be some sort of... I'm tempted to give it a, a goatee, but I think, I think not. Evil face, dark eyebrows, grin, earring. Will you turn it around? Show us all clearly. <laughs> not far off. Thank you, then. <clears throat> all right. All those of you whose pictures are now on there, including you, Dan, just stand for me. Congratulations, you're all through. The rest of you, I'm afraid, I'm going to ask you to go home. Thank you ever so much. Round of applause for them, please. Maybe my picture was over elaborate. I think he was looking for um, sort of clarity. Well, I was a bit gutty because he put my drawing on the board and then took it down again. So it's a bit, but at that point, I didn't know whether that was a good thing or a bad thing. I thought, you know, we're really in with a chance now and it's all going so well. So really disappointed. Okay. I'm going to come and split you into groups of three. 
have you three as a group, that's great. If you can move around here, David, and if you three come out here, I'll put you there with Jamie. James, if you come over here and swap with Sharon. Daniel, if you can come around here with these two, can you come forward for me? I'm just gonna write down the names of some of you. Okay. I'm gonna give you a few minutes to decide which person from your group will now be eliminated. Put your case to the other two as to why you should stay. Over to you, in your own time, thank you. So are we supposed to be like making a case to stay? Or well, are we even supposed we... to say, well you should go because you have glasses on? I'm very grateful for getting this far. Yeah. I am uh, quite happy if these you two uh, you want to go for it. Why is it well just to see who we, what, who we think and the person that has the most voice is the person? I'm not being that bothered. Mm. You're happy with that as well? That's fine. James, you're a hero. <laughs> Five. Four, three, two, one, zero. Thank you. <clears throat> Can I ask the person, please, who's being eliminated from this group to stand? Your name is? Daniel Love. Can I ask the person who's being eliminated from this group to stand? Warren. From that group? Your name is? Jamie. The person who's being eliminated from this group, please stand. Your name? James. And lastly, the person being eliminated from this group, please stand, Daniel. What this is, is survival of the fittest, but it's also survival of the shrewdest. It's quite easy when you're in groups of three for two of you to gang together and vote the third person out. Now, in terms of the sort of person that I want sat opposite me across the table when I've got a loaded gun, do I want a shrewd, calculating opportunist? No, I'm after people that are more modest and compliant, and the sort of people that would allow themselves to be eliminated in a game like this. So that is David, Warren, Jamie, Daniel, and James. Which is why, when I put you into your groups, the five names of the people I wanted to come with me were Daniel, Warren, Jamie, David, and James. Congratulations, you five, you are coming with me. Sick, annoyed, destructive. One of our teammates decided to um, volunteer himself straight away. It dawned on me straight afterwards what exactly what was happening, by which time he got his foot in the door and that was that. Make us proud. I'm really excited because Warren went through, so I was really happy about that. Because it was hard to do that voting thing. He's written down the names that he wanted and it proved to be right, so I think he knew what sort of people he was looking for anyway. Congratulations, first of all, obviously. Um, but I just want to have uh, a moment with you before we go any further. I need to know that you are aware of what's in store, that any one of you will have to load a bullet into a revolver, hand the revolver to me, I'll put the gun against my head, and I will be risking my life on my ability to read from you your unconscious signals. Um, if you don't want to be in that position, you can absolutely say so now and you can walk away and that's absolutely fine but I need to know that you're absolutely happy with this before we go any further. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay well then it's an absolute pleasure to have you on board James. Daniel. Cheers Daryl. Jamie. Warren and Daniel thank, thank you, you so much. The five seem confident but the next stage was to see how they would cope with loading a model 28 Smith and Wesson revolver. Very soon you'll see me choose the person who'll load the gun. And to prepare, we all went to a firing range. Under British law, you're not allowed to fire a live round unless you are a qualified armourer. This is why the live game has to take place overseas. Our armourer wishes to remain anonymous throughout the show. This is a Smith & Wesson 357 Magnum revolver, okay? 
you push the cylinder opening catch forward and push out with your hand from underneath, the cylinder will open. To load the weapon, take a cartridge. This one is a dummy cartridge, okay? It has a red end. The ones that we will use on the day will not be painted red, okay? There will be live rounds. We then put the cartridge into the weapon. We then close the cylinder like so and lock it forward. I'm now going to unload it and make it safe. As you cock the gun, you can see the cylinder rotates. There are some numbers painted on to the cylinder so that you will know which cylinder you put the bullet in. OK, what I'd like to move on to now is for you gentlemen to load the gun. If you'd like to come around first, sir. OK, Darren, if you'd like to just move slightly out of the way. So if you'd like to pick the gun up, keeping it pointed in a safe direction, open the weapon up then. OK, and I would like you to put a cartridge in chamber number two. And then close it up. Put a blank in cylinder number five. That's good, OK. Close it up. Cylinder number three. Blank cartridge in cylinder number four. Cylinder number six. Just put it in. Close it up. Some people might think I could play Russian roulette safely with a blank bullet. Our armourer took us outside to demonstrate the damage a blank causes at close range. Here we have the blank round and we're now going to load the gun. To reproduce Darren firing a blank against his head, this is what happens. This is the entry hole, this is the exit hole, blowing the top off the bottle. So as you can see, blanks can be just as dangerous at close range as a live round. As it became increasingly real for the six of us, our armourer loaded a live round. Here we have the live round. I'm loading the bullet into number three, number three. Okay, and I'm now closing the chamber. As you saw from the gun being fired, there's no flash. It's very different from as you see it in the movie. Any questions to that? Anything at all? The next test was to see how accurately I could predict their behaviour by this point. We're going to play a game. The game is word association. You all know the game. Yes, someone says a word, you say a word, but you would instinctively connect with it. Any hesitation, any repetition, you're out, and I want you just to take uh, a seat on one of those over there, any chair that you like. Daniel, I'll start with you. Your starting word is friendly. Unfriendly. Um, Rubbish. Rubbish, James, go take a seat. All right, start again. Jamie, your starting word is dull. Boring. Passive. Active. Sub. Above. Below. Around. Before. After. <laughs> Take a seat. Warren? Ridiculous. Amazing. Clever. Thick. Thin. Skinny. Fat. Heavy. Large. Big. Tiny. Small. Minute. Infinitesimal. Minuscule. Go and take a seat. <laughs> okay, just two of you left, head to head. Jamie, boring. Dull. Yeah, repetition. Go take a seat. Which makes Warren our winner. If you'd like to take a seat as well, Warren, either one. Well done, uh, congratulations, Warren. Interesting that none of you sat in the black chair, that the black was left free. That's the one that would attract me most. That would be my chair out of the six. In fact, James, if you want to just pull out from underneath, there's, a, there's an envelope. And just take it out and show the camera what that says and then place it on the chair. It says Darren's chair. <laughs> Although you're probably now wondering what it says under your own chairs. 
Daniel L. Daniel Love, will you just uh, take that out for me? Open it up, show the camera. Daniel L's chair. In fact, all of you, just pull out the envelopes. Daniel P's chair. James, open it up, show the camera. James's chair. Jamie's chair. <laughs> My price elimination. That'll be you, Warren's chair. And you'll also notice that you've arranged yourselves into perfect alphabetical order, going through Daniel L, Daniel P, Darren for me, James, Jamie, and Warren. Congratulations, you five. You are fitting into these patterns I need absolutely perfectly. Well done. Thank you. It would appear that uh, we're all falling into Darren's master plan and he's starting to read us rather well. More confused by why I was thinking the colour green the moment I walked into the room. The fact that I was wearing a yellow t-shirt might have uh, played a part in it, but I suppose it, I could have picked any colour at the time. The man is putting his life at risk um, and I'm just, I'm just glad that he's actually reading us well. Oh, I'm starting to wonder if there's anything he doesn't know about us. Later that day, I took them out for dinner. No, I suggest a game. Um, are you enjoying that? You drank it all. One go. Just give it All right. Uh, this is the cork. I'll place that in the centre. James, I'd like you to take the cork, hold it under the table. All of you, put your hands under the table. I want you to pass the cork around under the table, but try not to give any indication of who's got it or who's passing it to whom. All right? Okay. Well, we'll look the other way for this. Go. Fake as much as you like. Oh, you've got very soft hands. Okay, that's it. Stop. Whoever's got it now, just hang on to it. Keep your hands under the table. All right. Now, I spent a couple of days with you all, and I've got a sense of your personalities and how you interact as a group, so I should be able to do this. James took the cork to start with. I see you all as animals. This, is, this goes back to uh, the, the caricaturing that I do, the painting that I do. James, I see as a, as a, a deer, like a, a baby deer. You know, one that can't walk properly yet. <laughs> <laughs> You've got one of the stronger members of the group right next to you. I think you would just pass it straight to him. Warren, then... Initially, I saw you as a, like, uh, like a mole, but I see you more now as one of those Komodo lizards. Just sit very still. Very good. I'm sure you'd love this as well. Um, just quite intensely watching, and then they would just... The tongue would come out, and they'd, you know, they'd just grab. But I think you'd just pass that on as well. Daniel's different. Daniel's the cat, the black cat. A little more detached, a little cooler, rather fond of itself, a little prone to licking itself. <laughs> more likely to try and mess things up a little. I think you'd have passed it back or you'd have passed it across. And then it would have gone across again to Jamie, the Labrador. You'd have just passed it on again to you, Daniel. Kind of see you as the uh, shaggy but good-natured mongrel. <laughs> Very good-natured, but you know, not properly house-trained yet. <laughs> so I think you'd have tried to mess things up. You'd have, you'd have had to pass it around. You wouldn't have wanted to come across here, so you'd have passed it around again. But ultimately, what's interesting in this power play is who you will eventually work towards, who you will think towards. And I'm hoping that the cork would end up with a person that you all but unconsciously perceive as the leader of the group, who is the one that in his own way is most controlling. The cork at this point can only, it can only have ended up with you, Warren. Will you just bring your hands up for me? If you have got it, or if you haven't got it, I don't mind, just keep your hands like this for a second. There's no other answer. You must have it. Open your hands. Yeah. Yeah, seriously. Because of the British gun laws, we've travelled overseas to play Russian roulette in a secret location. Guys. For four of you, this is as far as it goes. I can only take one of you through to play the game. So I just want to thank you all now for doing this and taking part and being so extraordinary. Daniel, it's been a real pleasure. Daniel. Thank you. Jamie. Cheers. James. Yeah. And Warren, you too. 
Thank you very much. All right, if you look in front of you, you'll see these cameras here. I want you from now on just to keep looking in the cameras, even when I'm not talking to you, just keep looking straight ahead. Please try not to move your hands. Those cameras there are right in front of you. Just keep looking right into them. OK, let me bring some lights up on you. One last task for you. I want you all to think of a word. Now, you may not want to go for the first word that comes to mind. That's fine. Feel free to change your mind a few times, but then settle on one word for me now. From now on, do not change your mind. Stick with whatever you've got now and be absolutely honest when I ask you what your word is. OK, first of all, can I have the camera on? Daniel, love, please. Thank you. All right, OK, so Daniel, all the way through this, has been trying to remain very sceptical and cynical and absolutely solid and detached from the whole thing. You can see this here. You can see it in his eyes. Absolutely solid. This will be a solid word, uh, a detached, controlling word, like, like control or solid. Daniel, what's your word? Fox. OK. Then I'm sorry, I can't use you. OK, Daniel Pipe, please. This could be two things. This could be two things from Daniel. And it's either... I've, I have a feeling this is to do with fragility as a very sensitive character, and then this is a sensitive personality under pressure, which is what he's feeling now. It could be one of two things, but I have a feeling it's that. So it could be a fragile word, fragility, like... Um, like egg or glass or china, something, something that breaks under pressure. Um, something like that. What's your word, Daniel? Glass. Fantastic. Uh, Jamie, please. Jamie, OK. OK, with Jamie here, I think what he's doing here uh, could be a couple of things. He could be giving me calmness, but I, I think what it is, a feeling of being above it all and somehow sort of looking down and... Um, looking down and all just sort of being above the whole thing and if, he's, if that's what he's doing I can't use him so it would be a word just flying above the process like you know like, like a plane or, or, a, or a kite or something like that um, something like that something above looking down you, you can see it it's in the mouth and what, what, what's your word uh, Jamie? kite kite okay thank you um, well, I can't use him I can't use him James James throughout all of this it's just it's the it's just the level of nervousness it's like keep looking to the camera please straight to the camera it's like a little boy it's like he's so in touch with the level of reality with this and, and the, the, the fear is so much stronger with him and just being it's like a little boy who's lost his mother in a in a department store and this will be a, a fear it's just nerves it's just getting nerves from him and shaking or that sort of thing. James, uh, James what's your word? <clears throat> Nervous. Thank you. And um, Warren? Warren, what's your word? Sheep. OK, that's close enough. Can I have a wide shot, please? Daniel Pipes, the f fragility of that, that connection you made. Um, I'm sorry, Daniel. It's not going to be you either. Which leaves you two. It leaves Warren and James. And James is going to be you. OK? Yeah. Okay. Is that OK? Yeah. Excellent. All right, thank you. James, uh, I've given you a couple of minutes to gather your thoughts. I want to explain to you why it was that I chose you. Okay, out of the whole group, aside from the fact that I read your word correctly, but out of the whole group, you are the, the only one who I feel has, uh, who I feel has really embraced the reality of this and what I'm going to do. All right? But I want to check that you are okay with this and genuinely yeah. happy to do it, yeah? Yes, I am. You are? Yeah. All right, terrific. Then what I'm going to do is give you uh, another session with the armorer. Okay. And I won't have any contact with you and I won't speak with you until we actually play Russian Roulette. Okay. All right? Yeah. Thank you. I'll ask you to get out then. Thanks very much. The game of Russian Roulette that you're about to watch is being performed in a controlled environment with the full cooperation of firearms experts. And I know, as a viewer of this show, you'll be intelligent enough to be aware that this should only be attempted by me, here, with this level of preparation and expertise. Can we bring James up now, please?
You all right? Yep. Yeah. OK, this is the room where we're going to play it. OK. These are fixed uh, remote control cameras around the room. Mm -hmm. This here is bulletproof glass. You're going to be sat behind this for some of the time. All right? OK. This is the table. Before you sit down, I want you to check under the table there are no hidden cameras. Do that for me now. No, nope, that's good. All right, have a seat for me, thank you. James, can I ask you to verify we have not spoken since you agreed to play the game? No, we haven't. And you spent some time with the armorer, who's taken you through everything again, and also explained this to you. Yeah. This shield. Yeah. Can you explain what this is? Um, this is a shield we've had made. When you load a bullet into a revolver, you can see along the side here and at the front where the bullet lies, in which chamber it is. We've had this shield made, which fits onto the top and stops either the camera or me from accidentally seeing where the bullet is. Are you happy with that? And you're happy that's all the shield does? Yes. Yes? Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to bring the armour over. Gentlemen, these are live rounds. Please cover your ears. James, select a round, stand it there. Thank you, thank you. Our armourer will now leave, along with our cameraman for safety reasons. The rest of this will now be filmed using these remote control cameras. Okay, aside from you and me, now this room is empty. Also want you to know we are going out live at the moment. And also, James, I've signed a disclaimer. I've signed a form that uh, absolves you from any legal responsibility for this, all right? Also, morally, you are not responsible for this. It's my decision to do it, and I'm responsible for it, okay? Okay. If it fucks up, it's not your fault, all right? Pick up the gun. Take the gun under the table. Can you see the numbers? Yes. OK, move it around a bit. Familiarize yourself with the numbers. Make sure you can see them clearly. I want you to choose one of those numbers. You keep that number to yourself, but have a look at them now and choose one. This number you choose now, it doesn't matter which one it is. You can change your mind as many times as you like, but you make that decision for me, and you settle on a number. Are you thinking of one now? Yeah. All right, you need to repeat that number to yourself over and over again, quietly in your head. Fix that number in your mind. Pick up the bullet. You're going to place that bullet into the number chamber you were just thinking of. As you do it, keep your fingers away from the trigger. Do that for me now. Put it in. Check as it goes in. Double check that it's going in the correct chamber, the one that you're thinking of. Is it going in the correct one? Yes, it is. All right, lock that number into your mind. Keep your fingers away from the trigger. Keep the gun pointed down at the floor. Feel free to move the cylinder around a bit. You can move it as many times as you like or spin it, whatever you like. Whenever you're ready, close the cylinder, snap it shut, make sure it's closed. Keep saying that number to yourself, James. It's very important you remember it. Okay. All right, pick up the shield. In the way the armor has shown you, and keep your fingers away from the trigger as you do this, you're going to place the shield now onto the gun. Keep your fingers away from the trigger. It's OK, take your time. Yeah, it's locked in. Is it on? Yeah. In the way the armor has shown you, again, without pointing the gun directly at you, I want you to check that you can't see where the bullet is, neither from the side nor from the front. Happy with that? Yep, can't see it. Great. Place the gun on the table for me. All right. 
That's the hard part over for you. All you've got now in your mind is a number between one and six. You need to lock that number in your mind so tightly now, all right? Just take a minute to do that for me now. Otherwise, with the pressure of all of this, it will slip your mind over and over again to yourself, all right? It's a number between one and six. That's all this is now. In a moment, I'll get you to count from one to six. As long as you can do that, you're absolutely fine. Okay. Okay. Behind me is the bulletproof glass. Behind that's a chair. You're going to go and sit in that chair for your own safety when I tell you to. Mm -hmm. The chair is bolted to the floor. You must not move out of the chair. You must stay in the chair. All right? Okay. Whatever happens, you don't move. And whatever happens, you do not try and stop me. Don't call out. Don't try and stop it. All right? If I'm not 100% confident, I won't do it. I won't pull the trigger. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. I'd like you to go and sit in the chair. There are ear protectors on the chair. Just put them on your lap for now. You won't need them quite yet. You sat in the chair? Yep. Can you see me in the gun? Yes, I can. James, I'm going to ask you in a moment to count from one to six. I'm only going to ask you to do this once. You need to count clearly and slowly and loudly so I can hear you. From one to six. Listen, very important as you count, don't give me any clues. Don't try and help me. If you try and help me, James, it will confuse me. And it's really important I'm not confused. Does that make sense? Yes, yeah, it does. All right. When I say go, just take a little while. Just take a moment just to, to take a breath and relax. And then count from one to six. Loudly, clearly, and slowly. We'll take a breath first. Go. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five, six. OK, thank you. I'm going to set the gun to a chamber that I feel is safe. That's number, th uh, that's number three. Number three, I feel is safe. Each time that I pull the trigger, the chamber will rotate one round. So I'm going to start by firing number three, which I feel is safe, and then four, then five, then six, and then one, and then two. Number three, I feel is safe. James, will you put your ear defenders on? Number three, I feel is safe. Number four, I feel is safe. Number five. Stand up. Thanks. Okay. You all right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> did you have your eyes open? Were you watching? Yeah, at that point I did, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're extraordinary, thank you. In each episode of this series, I will offer an applicant a blind choice of either a pleasant experience, a treat, or a darker trick. They won't know which one they've chosen, and they may not know how or when it will happen to them. All the applicants responded to advertisements. These are the six people that I've selected. They just don't know it yet. Welcome to Trick or Treat. <laughs> Tonight's applicant is Ishani, a 21-year-old student who lives in London. We had her friend invite her to a restaurant in Notting Hill, and we filled the place with extras and hidden cameras. Can I have the squash soup, please? Squash soup? Followed by the spinach and the coffee. Yeah, that. Shani. Hi. Hello. So you've applied to be part of the show? Yes. And I'd like to say we'd love to use you. Okay. Okay. What happens to you depends largely upon your choice of one okay. of these two cards. All right? Okay. Now one of them says trick. Okay. All right? And uh, one of them says treat. Okay. All right? If you pick the treat card, then what happens to you will be something lovely, be something okay. very nice. If you pick the trick card, it won't be. It'll be something that is unpleasant and could be quite dark. Right. Would you like to play? Yes. You would? Excellent. So, I need you to sign your contract. Which kind of allows us to do anything we like with you. OK. So we take that, have a little read through it, and uh, if you can just sign your name at the bottom for me, that Thank would be great. You. Just at the bottom would be lovely, thank you. I'm mean, really shaky. <laughs> lovely, thank you so much. <sighs> lovely signature. Okay. So I'll mix these up. And ask you to select either one. And you'll do that just by placing your finger uh, on top of either one. So if you could choose one for me. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. No, that's uh, that's terrific. Lovely. Well, you can expect uh, a phone call in the next couple of weeks. Okay. There's your plate back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll let you know later whether she's picked a trick or a treat. Now, I've always been a big fan of Pop Idol, so I was very excited to learn that Simon Callow had agreed to come on the show. So it's never been here before? No. No. Me neither. No. There was a stately home now used as primarily an as an art gallery. Yeah, yeah. Um, when we go in, what I've done, I, I paint, I paint uh, portraits, and right. uh, we've put some of mine up in a up in a room. We'll have a cursory look at them, and then we'll sit down and get into the thing that I, I'd like to do with you. So, uh, awesome. mm. these are they. How fantastic! I love you. Awesome. 
Thank you very much. Oh, yes, of course. Yes. yes, yes, of course. Yes, yes indeed. You just had a just had a new one. <laughs> My friend. Of course, yes, and uh, your good self over there. <laughs> Oh, very nice. A younger, more beardy incarnation. <laughs> Actually, don't look at it too much for now. Right. I've got a reason. If you take a seat, Father. Yes. Yeah. One of the uh, one of the reasons why I like painting these things is because I'm interested, in, I suppose, in how much we pick up from people's faces and how much we read, in particular from the eyes. Yes. Because there's so much that we read from a person and pick up at an entirely unconscious level, just purely from the eyes. And what I'd like you to do is to look at mine and I will look at yours and I'm going to try and transmit something to you which will be a word. I'm going to ask you to sort of relax a bit and put your hands by your side. Thank you. So it's a word that I'm thinking of which I'm going to try and send to you. Uh, it is four letters long. Right? It's not a rude word. It is four letters long. And uh, very important that at the moment we just verify that I haven't until this point right now given you any indication what we're going to be doing today at all. No. So I haven't asked you to consider any words nor ask you to or put any words in your head Nothing. or anything like that at all. No. Right, okay. it's important these things happen right now as we're talking. Good. So if I asked you what the word is that I'm thinking of, it would be impossible for you to know right now unless you just guessed, all right? Yeah. But rather than you thinking it is impossible, what I'd like you to do, Simon, is to sort of just imagine, just sort of almost sort of play the role that, it, that you did know as if it was something easy, as if you had the ability to read my mind. So it becomes an easy thing for you, mm. uh, like a game, like a game that we're playing. Mm. So if I told you, for example, that I'm sending you the first letter now, and I'm concentrating on the first letter of this four-letter word, and instead of thinking that sounds impossible, you just go for whatever letter feels right, as if you just know the first letter. So the first letter is, what is that? Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, very good, exactly. So that's just an easy thing, just comes to your mind without you having to worry about it. So now just start to turn that in your mind into a, into a word. You've got the first letter, and there could be various four-letter words beginning with R. What's the second letter of that four-letter word? A. No, it's not. Okay, just take a second. Do keep your eyes open, but just, just reconsider that. So we're after the second letter of the word, it's not an A. I think you're just perhaps a little quick off the mark. What's the second letter? O. O. Very good. Excellent. So you've got R and O. Now there are various options, various follow to words beginning with R and O, but what is sticking in your mind at the moment? It has nothing to do with the environment we're in, by the way. Not that I can think of anything that might be influenced by the environment. Not that you'd be aware of at a conscious level. What's you the, word? Say the word? Yes. Road. Road. R O A D. Yes. As in a street. A road. Exactly. Yes. Not yes. R O D E. R O A D. No, R O A D. R O A D. Now, that word, as far as you're concerned, just popped into your mind as I was talking to you? Yes. Nothing you'd considered before? No. Okay. And are you aware of anything since we've met that might have influenced you? Just come and have another look at the painting with me, but nothing you're aware of that could have influenced you to choose that word? No. Felt entirely fair and free? Yes. Okay. I didn't give you much of a chance to look at this earlier on, uh, and I had my reasons for it. If you just come in a little bit closer, I don't know if you can see anything at all strange about it. Can you see just in the eye there? No, I can't without my glasses. Put your glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> can you read it? I can. R -O -A -D. It says. R O A D. It is painted in the picture. <laughs> That's extraordinary. That's amazing. And when you saw the picture just as you came in, you weren't consciously aware. Of, you <laughs> shouldn't. It's so faint. On. No, you didn't even know exactly. exactly. So exactly. you wouldn't be able to read it. Had a contract, and that really is something. It's not. You can see it's not a. It's not stuff on. That is a. Oh, well, fantastic. You proved a, uh, a delightful and responsive subject. Thank you, Simon. Thank you very much Thank indeed. You. I had a word starting with R. It was actually the word raft. And then it sort of morphed in my mind into a road. He couldn't have got up and done it, for example, since I uttered the word. No, no way at all. Uh, it's what it is. It's there, clearly written in my right pupil. I have Ashani come to meet me so that I can tell her what's in store for her. I know from talking to her that she lacks confidence and is becoming disillusioned with her college work. This will form the basis for her trick or treat. I'm very up and down with it, between getting really inspired and really defeated. I need her to forget everything she's learned so far about her own abilities. I can then start to rebuild her confidence and create a real positive state in which she believes anything is possible becomes something very powerful. Can you play the piano? Uh, 
basic. Okay. Would you be afraid to embarrass yourself usually by uh, uh, giving us a sort of try. shot? Go on. Excellent, excellent. Very good. Take a seat. So one week from now, you are going to be giving a concert, a piano recital at uh, Wigmore Hall in London. That is, but that is the last time you're going to play the piano between now and then, all right? Forget the piano, forget playing the piano, and just focus on the things that, that, that I tell you. I have her listen to the piece of music that she'll have to play, and I'm teaching Ishani using six or seven different levels of unconscious learning. So the music becomes something that you feel inside you, inside, inside your head, inside your head, along your arm. We continue to monitor Ishani to ensure she's doing the exercises I set her. One week from now, she'll have to play at Wigmore Hall, the famous chamber music venue. I'm really looking forward to it, but the kind of thinking part of me would really like to know what's going on. There seems to be something missing. After the sessions with their own, I don't really remember that much. I don't really think about it. I really haven't discussed it with my friends. I suppose they're slightly concerned that I'm spending hours with the crazy mind control guy and I don't remember what's happening. Ishani has returned for her final session with me. In three days' time, she will have to play a piece of music at Wigmore Hall. So each line and each space corresponds to a note on the keyboard. All right, and forgive me if you... I start with a rudimentary introduction as to how the notes on the manuscript paper relate to the keys on a piano. E, 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 go F on the You take a mental photograph of each page. Throughout the session, I continue to use a variety of subliminal techniques to develop her skills. It's just about forgetting everything and forgetting playing the piano and just, just allowing yourself just focusing on that area around your finger. Storing and archiving. Imagine yourself on stage with the advantages of a slowed down sense of time. So your own internal process is working so much quicker than the outside. You can believe that it's hopeless and that you haven't got a clue how to play a note. You can be that if you like, or you can make the choice to allow it to lost in the music that you're creating. More of Ashani later. We go to Gallagher's Steakhouse in New York. It was one of the first prohibition era speakeasies for the gamblers and stars of Broadway. Tonight, diners have been told that there is a camera crew documenting the abilities of one of the waiters who claims to be psychic and handsome. Hi there, how are Hello. you guys doing? Hello. You ready to order? Yeah. Yes. Okay, don't tell me what you want. I'm going to try and do that for you. Oh. All right? Okay. okay. So, first of all, I'm going to put you both down, I think, for the same starter. Um, and I think that's going to be the soup. Yeah? Yeah. The main course. I think you're going to go for uh, a lighter option. I don't think there's actually vegetarian there, but I'd put you down. I think for the salmon, yes. I'm going to put you down for the steak. Yeah, of which there's more than one. We'll go for the... Got to do better than that. Hang a steak. You got it. How do you like that medium row? <laughs> you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Desserts. Again, lighter for you. So cheesecake for you. And uh, I, so I think I'm going to go for the custard or the sorbet. I'm going to go for the custard for you, am I right? Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Good. Well, thank you. Um, well, if you don't mind, I'll take this a little bit further. Uh, you, uh, I think you both see yourselves as uh, highly dynamic and charged people, and people that seem to sort of um, circle the world in a different orbit from the rest of us, and they tend to make otherworldly connections with each other. So I'd imagine one of the things that brought you together would be the fact that you'd be the same star sign. Is that correct? Yeah? Now, it's bullshit, and I don't believe in that, but Pisces, Aries? Aries, Pisces, one of the two? Yeah? Aries, great. Okay. Um, think of something I, I, I really couldn't know. Do you have a, uh, you have a pet? I used to. Used to? Okay, what, what, what type of pet? A dog. A dog, okay. Can you remember his name? Yeah. Or her name? Great, okay, just, just say the name to yourself. In fact, just, uh, just pick a letter somewhere in the middle of the name. All right, I'll just try it with a letter somewhere in the middle of the name. You'll just look at me and think it's an L. Is that an L? Yeah. Yeah? Great, okay, and just say it to yourself. This is a, a dog you used to have. You died a few years ago? No. No, you've given him to somebody else. Yes. Okay, all right. Roly, 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 Riley. Riley? Ro again? Riley, okay, <laughs> excellent. And is James proud of you? Yeah. Yeah, your father? Yeah. You see, what you've learned from him, you've learned a real um, a kind of a, a dislike of authority, a dislike of being told kind of what to do, constantly trying to have trouble paying your uh, car uh, speeding fines, speeding tickets. 
It was like a parking ticket. Did you get I in never... trouble for it? Um, no. Oh, I can see you not paying parking tickets and getting into trouble for that. <laughs> When you were young, you did something with your sister. You you uh, cut or damaged or something. Your sister was it with the razor? Yes. Good. You should call your sister more often, Elizabeth. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. You should call her. She'll visit more often if you talk to her more. Enjoy your meal. I'll go get you food. Thank you. Thank you. The thing is, I didn't pay a ticket, and I lost my license. I don't know if you meant that. It's the morning of the piano recital, and my first session with Ashani was only just over a week ago. She still isn't sure whether she chose a trick or a treat. Could you play the piano? Basic. You are going to be giving a concert, a piano recital, but that is the last time you're going to play the piano between now and then. Do you know what card you, you picked? Do I know what card I picked? I think I picked a treat. I think it feels like a treat so far. If I don't completely go with it, then I know there's even less chance that it's going to work. Um, but I, yeah. No, it will be fine. It has to be. <laughs> Amazing. Look you. amazing. How are you feeling at the moment? All right. A bit shaky. Okay. Yeah, you seem a bit less confident than. Uh... Yeah, it's kind of deteriorated slightly since I last saw you. I think. <laughs> Let's go down and have a look at the stage. <laughs> this is a piano. <laughs> have a seat. Let's get comfy. No playing. So, just so you know, um, just to give you a starting point, the first notes of the piece are this C here and this C here. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now we need to let the audience in because people are already here, they're sort of milling around in the foyer. Okay. Uh, it just seems insane. I think I, uh, but either me or Darren or both of us are insane. Ishani is one of three pianists performing today and we've made sure she goes on first in the concert. I just don't want to do it. Genuinely. <laughs> that nervousness, that adrenaline will, you know, it will aid your performance. You'll be fine. Just trust it. Sit down. Start playing. It'll all come. This is a sophisticated lunchtime audience who regularly attend recitals and are used to a very high standard of playing.
Oh, wow. <laughs> that was amazing. Thank you. How are you doing? Go I'm on. really, really shaky. Come on, let's get another drink. Was that the first time she'd ever played a piano? Very impressed. She must have a lot of concentration. She also must be very bright, I would guess. Simply amazing. I mean, you can't believe that, really. I mean, a good questions asked about that, I should think. <laughs> Oops. You look like you'd played the piano all your life. Um, yeah, it was really strange. Um, I was uh, terrified, but I just, I just really got into it and it was really fun. It was great. Thank you. Thank you. And it just felt natural and normal when you were doing it or were you like, what the hell are my fingers doing? Or No, you... it felt, it felt like I'd played before. It felt like you'd played a million times before? Yeah. Excellent. Well, cheers. cheers. Thank you. Cheers. You did play amazingly, and the real reason why you played amazingly tonight um, is that you have actually played all your life. Oof. You've been playing since you were tiny, you've played all your life, and you are a very good pianist. The reason why I did this was because when I first spoke to you about playing the piano, you told me that you were sort of a little jaded by it, that when you were seven, you were able to play, and it was something exciting and power. Yeah, take a drink. Something <laughs> exciting and powerful and positive, and that as you'd grown up, it'd sort of become something you'd kind of lost that excitement and lost that connection with. I'm very up and down with it, between getting really inspired and really defeated. All the practice that I've taken you through wasn't really to teach you how to play the piano in a week. It was to do the opposite of that. It was to undo all the teaching that you had and to make you forget how to play the piano. Forget the piano, piano. Forgetting, forgetting everything, letting go. 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 Letting as you were growing up. Okay. And that was your real treat. Okay. But thank you so much for trusting me and going with it and going out there and doing it because I know in your head you'd never played before and that was so brave of you and you're fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> so proud of you. Thank you. You've got an amazing talent. Since the concert, I've been very, very, very excited, um, just beaming all the time. The experience has made such a big difference. I had an exam quite recently um, and I got the result and it was much better than I had expected. It's definitely been seen as a positive thing by my tutors.